Number 42. Write Lua structures for the following. Then we have A through D. Okie dokie. So we've already done, I think, three questions that have Lua structures. We're building up on more and more complex ones. So if this is your first attempt at Lua structures, go back to, I think the start is number 39. So if you're on the playlist, you could just go back to number 39. And that will be like the easy peasy ones, which will get you all the way up to this point. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. Next thing I wanted to say is that teachers and professors teach Lewis structures very differently from school to school or even, you know, teacher to teacher, professor to professor. No right way is the arbitrarily correct way of doing it. So I might teach it different than what your teacher or professor is teaching it. However, they're both correct. So the answers leading up to the answers will be the correct answer. Um, however, we might do it a little bit differently from each other. So just know that I have my own foolproof Lua structure method of doing Lua structures, and I can probably guarantee that it, it will work. Um, it's just from all the years that I've been tutoring, it's the easiest that students try to understand the Lua structures. So um, yeah, so with that, we will get started. So A, we need to write a Lua structure for S, E, F6. So the first thing you got to figure out is what is the central atom? So just know that the central atom is always going to be the least electronegative. So I'll just put least electronegative and it will never be hydrogen. All right. So hydrogen is never a central atom. So now we just got to go by the electronegativity rules. Now remember electronegativity from left to right across a period, electronegativity will always increase so very, very, very high electronegative elements here. Fluorine is actually the most electronegative. And as you go from top to bottom, electronegativity will decrease. So very, very, very low electronegativity over here. And I only put this little section of the periodic table because these are the only elements that are allowed to covalently bond because covalent bond is all nonmetals and that's what Lewis structures are focused around. It's all covalent bonding. It's all sharing electrons. So that's that. Now between selenium, which is over here and fluorine, selenium is the less electronegative element of the two. So that means that selenium would be in the middle surrounded by the six fluorine. So one, two, three, four, five, and we'll put six over here. So that's what number one is all about. Write the blueprint. All you want to do is just find out who's in the center. Just kind of write the blueprint. Now you will draw valence electrons around each atom. So selenium had six valence electrons and each fluorine had seven. So you're just going to draw six electrons, six dots around selenium and seven around fluorine. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then for fluorines, each one of them gets seven. So I'm going to just quickly draw out seven of these. Hopefully you guys are understanding this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments as I do this. This is fun. <laughs> Almost there. And last one. So what you're now going to do is you're going to bond only single bond between the atoms. So that means that I have to have one electron from one atom and the other electron from the other atom to make that bond. So one and one will make a single bond here. One and one will make a single bond, a single bond, single bond, single bond, and single bond. So that's cool. Now, you just check your outer atoms for the octet. An octet means eight electrons. There are some exceptions. Hydrogen only wants to have a max of two electrons when it's bound. And boron, when it's neutral, only wants to have a max of six electrons when it's bound. But for fluorine, it wants the octet. So two, four, six, eight. And that's good. And if you go around all of them, you will see that each fluorine has two, four, six, eight. They all will have it. So that means that all of the outer elements are good. And just for the last one. So that means that probably the central atom is good, but let's just double check. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. What? 
Is that possible? Yes, it is. That is a rule and an exception that you have to memorize. Just know that the central atom, and only the central atom, not outer ones, the central atom can have more than eight electrons if it is in, I'll say, period three and beyond. So I'll say three and below. So period two, which is this period from boron all the way to neon, that's period two, cannot have more than eight if it's the central atom. But if you're three and below, all of these could technically have um, more than eight electrons if it's the central atom. And what I mean is basically your nonmetals. Remember, metals like to lose electrons and not um, gain them and not covalently bond. So phosphorus could have more than eight, sulfur, silicon, bromine. If these are all the central atoms, it could have more than eight. So we are good here. A is done. B. Xe, F, 4. Okay, so it's between xenon, which is over here, and fluorine. Xenon would be in the middle because it's the least electronegative. So just put Xe. And it's surrounded by four fluorine. So I'll say one, two, three, four. Draw your valence electrons around each atom. So xenon actually has eight and fluorine has seven. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for xenon, and then I'm going to put seven around fluorine. Oop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This fluorine needs seven. They all get seven. And then we're going to bond only single bond for each connection, because that's step number three, right? Bond only the single bonds between the atoms. So we have one and one, one and one, one and one, and then one and one. And now you check your outer atoms. So this fluorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. So they all have the octet. So the, all the outer guys are cool. But what about xenon? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Is that possible? Well, yeah, because xenon is all the way down here. It's in group, or actually it's in period four. That's below two and down. So it's in period three and below. So xenon, since it's the central atom, can have more than eight electrons. So B is done. C. S E C L three with the plus charge. So now we're dealing with positives. And positives are mean that you actually lost one electron. And when do you take this into account? After you draw your dots. So as soon as you draw your dots for all of your atoms, then you will take into consideration the positive and the negative charges. But first we got to figure out who's in the middle, selenium or chlorine. Selenium's over here, chlorine's over here. Hmm, which one? Well, it turns out that the increase this way is more than a drop down over here. So that would mean that silica, uh, not silicon, selenium would be in the middle. And it kind of makes sense, right? There's three chlorines, there's one selenium. So selenium would be in the middle, surrounded by the three chlorines. So I'll put Cl, Cl, Cl. I try to make it as symmetrical as possible. And then I will put the valence electrons. So selenium has six electrons and chlorine has seven. So I will draw six around selenium. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then each chlorine has seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we have to take into consideration the charge. Now, you want to be fair. Do you think that you would lose the one electron on a chlorine or a selenium? You try to be fair. Since there's three chlorines, it's pretty unfair 
to remove it from one of them, right? So instead of trying to figure out which chlorine to lose the one electron from, you'll just lose it from the selenium. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just erase one of them. All right. And now let's bind for the single bond. So one and one, one and one, one and one. And now we just check. So this chlorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's good. And this chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. And now we just check inside. This selenium has two, four, six, eight. That's perfect. In this case, it has the octet. It doesn't have more, but that's okay. Just as long as it has the octet, that's fine. And now since it had a charge, we just have to bracket it and state that there was a charge here. And that's the answer for C. D is the last one, which is Cl2, B, B, Cl2. So this looks pretty symmetrical. And they even tell me that it contains a B, B single bond. So these are going to be bound together. So it looks like two chlorines will be bound to boron, which will be bound to another boron, which will be bound to two chlorines. So let me write that over here. We have two chlorines bound to boron, bound to boron, and then two chlorines. And I try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So now I will draw my valence electrons around each atom. So boron has three, chlorine has seven. So I'll draw three dots around boron and seven dots around chlorine. So I'll say one, two, three, one, two, three. And now let's do chlorines, each have seven. So that one's good, this one needs seven. Okay, this one needs seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then last but not least, I'm just gonna fit this over here. Okay, make all your single bonds. So that's one electron to one electron. Like that, like that, like that, and like that. Now we just check this, the outer elements, right? We're at number four. Check outer elements for the octet. Eight electrons. So this chlorine, two, four, six, eight. That one's good. This chlorine at the bottom, two, four, six, eight. That's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. So that's good. This chlorine has two, four, six, eight. That's good. And now we go in for the center. This boron has two, four, six electrons, but that's okay because remember when it's neutral, boron wants to have only a max of six and the same thing with this boron, two, four, six. So even though this boron doesn't have the octet, it's still okay because it only wants to have a max of six. So that is the final answer. And those are the answers to 42. Yippee. Awesome job, guys. This was fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this is getting easier. If not, my suggestion is go back to the other Lewis structure ones. If you haven't already done so, that might give you a little bit of more practice. And if you've done that already, there's more to come. So don't worry. All right. I got this and you got this. We all got this. All right. So thank you so much. Tell all your friends about this. Tell your classmates. That would be cool. Let's start a community. Thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next question. And if you wouldn't mind, click subscribe. See you later.